நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேனல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வெர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் த டேமல் வீடியோ இஸ் கிவன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் வீடியோ திஸ் இஸ் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தீபா அண்ட் ஐ எம் ப்ரெசென்டிங் யூ த இங்கிலீஷ் வெர்ஷன் ஆஃப் த டேமல் வீடியோ இன் மை லாஸ்ட் வீடியோ ஐ எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ட் அபவுட் த எஃபெக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த மூன் இன் டுவெல் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஹவுசஸ் for the native of capricorn ascendant in this video i'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of aquarius ascendant now let me explain the effects of the moon in the ascendant house for the native of aquarius ascendant when moon resides in the ascendant house the native is aquarius ascendant and aquarius rashi when moon resides in the ascendant house you have to make the similar predictions as i told for capricorn ascendant and capricorn rashi you have to make predictions based on the strength of saturn moon here should not be amavasya moon and it should not get the connection of saturn in other words saturn and moon should not aspect each other or saturn should not be in conjunction with the moon or saturn should not aspect the moon so when saturn does not reside in aquarius and it is residing in any other house with good strength and subhatva there will be no shortcoming that the native will face being aquarius ascendant and aquarius rashi what is the reason as per bhavat bhavam moon will be in the 8th house to its own house cancer which is the 6th house lord for the native of aquarius ascendant for the native of aquarius ascendant moon is the lord of the 6th house if moon is residing in a wrong place then the major planetary period of the moon will affect the life of the native the native of aquarius ascendant should never undergo the major planetary period of the moon If moon is pabatwa then the major planetary period of the moon will be very worse to the native of aquarius ascendant If you inquire about the experience of the native of aquarius ascendant during major planetary period of the moon they will not be even able to articulate or express their pain they will just blink out of intense pain Moon definitely is a planet that gives such worse pain to the native of Aquarius ascendant being the 6th house lord. Why should the native of Aquarius ascendant not undergo the major planetary period of the moon? Is it only because moon is 6th house lord? No, it is not the only reason. 
there is one more reason for it. The ascendant Lord Saturn and Moon are enemies to each other. Saturn is a dark planet and Moon is a luminous planet. For a planet which is dark, Moon will not deliver benefits because it is a luminous planet. So for the native of Aquarius ascendant, Moon is not only the lord of the sixth house, it is a dead enemy to the Ascendant Lord as well. This is the reason why native of Aquarius Ascendant will face the worst part of life during the major planetary period of the Moon. When the Moon resides in the Ascendant house, as per Bhavad Bhavam, it will be in the 8th house to its own house Cancer. When Ascendant Lord Saturn is not in conjunction with the moon or aspecting the moon and it resides in any other house without the connection of the moon and staying Subhatva, there will not be much worse effects. If moon has got a lot of light energy, there will not be very worse effects. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the second house which is Pisces. This is the house where the moon should not reside at all for the native of Aquarius ascendant. In addition to this moon should never be Amavasya when it resides in the second house. The moon should not definitely stay as Amavasya during the month of Panguni that is Falguna, mid-March to mid-April or Chittirai, Chaitra, mid-April to mid-May. I had explained once the natal chart of a business magnet. Many had a lot of questions regarding the natal chart of that business magnet. Let me take this opportunity to answer your questions, to clarify your doubts. In the natal chart of that business magnet, both the moon and Venus are very strong and I predicted that the business magnet will lose all his wealth during the major planetary period of the moon. The same happened in his life. Many people raised a question about which I was really proud. Why the moon did not get any Subhatva by the exalted Venus conjunction? Since you do not understand certain concepts that I explain, you ask such a question. There are three different degrees of conjunction such as 8 degrees, 13 degrees and 22 degrees. If a planet is 22 degrees apart from another planet, it should not be considered as a conjunction at all, even if both the planets reside in the same house. You should have definitely noticed in the natal chart of that business magnet that the degrees between Moon and Venus is huge. In his natal chart, Venus was just entering the house and Moon was leaving the house. And there was 22 degrees of difference between these two planets. I published his natal chart under the title of How to Predict a Chart as a Higher Level Class of Astrology. Everybody doubted how he can lose all his properties while the natural benefic Venus resides in the house, the very same house where the moon resides. Many people wondered why exalted Venus cannot make the other planet Subhatva. I wanted to answer the questions of my subscribers and henceforth I want to make use of this moment. In the natal chart of the business magnet, Moon was heading closely towards Amavasya and I vaguely remember that Mercury resided in Revati Nakshatra and I definitely know that there was more than 20 degrees of difference between Moon and Venus. Therefore, Venus could not make the planet Moon Subhatva. Though Venus resided in the very same house, there was no use. The intensity of the Subhatva or the concept of Subhatva is based on how close two planets reside. Having said all these in any situation, the sixth house lord should not be in the second house. 
for the native of aquarius ascendant when moon resides in the second house as soon as the major planetary period of the moon starts it will spoil the wealth of the native family of the native speech of the native because the second house signifies family speech and wealth and when the major planetary period of the moon starts it spoils this house you have to make further predictions about whether the native will be affected the worst or not based on the strength of the ascendant lord and based on subhatu of the moon you have to make predictions you have to check whether moon is heading towards amavasya or whether it has a lot of light energy you have to check whether moon is purnima or whether it has the connection of natural benefits like jupiter or venus now let me explain the effects of the moon in the third house which is aries the upachaya sthanas are 3rd house 6th house 10th house and 11th house the 6th house lord moon can reside in the 3rd house because this is one of the upachaya sthanas this will deliver a certain level of benefits to the native in case moon is subhatwa then it will not deliver very bad effects and it will deliver benefits therefore for the native of aquarius ascendant when moon resides in the 3rd house it is good Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the house of Taurus which is the 4th house. Moon should not definitely get exalted in Taurus. What will happen when moon gets exalted in 4th house? It will deliver benefits through its significance that is it will deliver a very good mother. When moon is subhatwa then it will deliver the 6th house effect. it will give a lot of debts to improve the life of the native indeed debts are also part of life when moon gets exalted in the fourth house it will deliver good servants and the native will have a good serving mentality all these benefits will be delivered when moon is subhatwa and in case if it is parbhatwa what will happen it will definitely affect the fourth house the mother will exist but the mother cannot play an important role in the life of the native or it will render an unhealthy mother though she exists she will not be able to serve the children the mother will exist but there will be no use because of the mother or the mother will be a very good one but she will have nothing to serve the native so these shortcomings will be delivered when moon is parbhatwa in the 4th house now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 5th house which is gemini the 6th house lord should not reside in the 5th house this is such a worse position and it will deliver worse effects to the native it will give a lot of shortcomings related to the children there will be loss of children or there will be deep anxiety because of the children it will affect the children it will spoil the health of the children all these worse effects will be delivered by the moon when it resides in the 5th house being the 6th house lord Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 6th house its own house cancer This position is also not considered to be good If the moon is waxing heading closely towards purnima or if it is purnima and it has got the connection of natural benefits such as jupiter or venus then all the benefits that i explained for the fourth house will happen that is it will deliver all the good house effects of the sixth house it will do all the auspicious effects of the sixth house it will make the native to work very well to work very hard and it will make you a good servant and it will help you to grow in the life by serving well or working well 
However, the sixth house is not such a great place because it does not have much improvement or many auspicious house effects. You have to make predictions based on the Subhatva and Pabhatva of the moon. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the seventh house. The sixth house lord or the eighth house lord should not reside in the seventh house. It will not definitely deliver benefits. The points that I always rate rate to make predictions is Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength. The points that I always rate rate for making the best predictions are Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength. Subhatva of the moon will alter the shortcoming a little. When the 6th house lord resides in the 7th house, it indicates that the native will get a wife with certain shortcomings or the wife will be a nitpicking or a nagging one. The wife and husband cannot live a harmonious life in this case. Either the husband or the wife will find a lot of problems with the spouse. The only antidote is Subhatva of the moon. If the moon is highly Pabhatva, then what will happen? The native will not get married at all. You have to make further predictions based on the strength of the sun. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 8th house which is Virgo. It is good when the moon resides in the 8th house because it is the 6th house lord for the native of Aquarius ascendant. This is not considered to be good because, as I said for Sagittarius Ascendant, this establishes the connection of 6th and 8th house. There will be worse effects when Moon is Pabhatva. This will affect all the goodness of the 8th house and it will also affect the longevity of the native. It will definitely reduce the longevity of the native. This will spoil all the goodness of the 8th house. And the moon will also increase the inauspicious effects or the bad effects of the 8th house. If the lord of the 6th house is in the 8th house, it will affect the native a lot. What are the bad effects of the 8th house? Humiliation, shame, litigation, accidents, all these will be delivered by the moon. This will happen during Dasha of the moon. You have to check whether Nato will undergo Dasha of the moon in his lifetime. And you have to also identify at which age he will undergo. Let us say, a moon is in the 8th house residing in the Uttaram Nakshatra that is Uttara Falguni and the native is 7 or 10 years old. If a person is born as Uttara Nakshatra that is Uttara Falguni Nakshatra the native will undergo the major planetary period of the moon at a very young age. This will affect the parents of the native and the native as well. If the native does not undergo the major planetary period of the moon, this will not definitely happen. That is, these bad effects will not be delivered by the moon. But based on Karaka and the 8th house effects, there will be some shortcomings. It is important to identify whether the native undergoes the dasha of the moon or not. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the ninth house which is Libra. The sixth house lot should not reside in the ninth house. Though this is an auspicious house, moon should not reside in this house. Moon should not reside in any house other than third and eleventh house. When moon resides in ninth house, it will not deliver any benefits and it will affect the father. If the moon has light energy, that is when it is heading closely towards Purnima or if it is Purnima 
or it has connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter, Venus, then it will deliver benefits to a certain extent. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 10th house which is Scorpio. Moon gets debilitated in Scorpio. Though from one point of view, when 6th house Lord gets debilitated, it is considered to be good, Moon will spoil the profession of the native. You have been making predictions based on different combinations. The sixth house lot should not be totally spoiled because no man can live without getting debts. Without house loans, he cannot buy a house. When will you buy a house having your own money? Therefore, when the moon is very weak, when it loses Tanabala, it will not let the native to get debts for the improvements in the life. And how can one survive without any profession? If the 10th house is Subhatva, then one can manage their own business. In case both the 10th house is spoiled and the 6th house lord gets debilitated, what will happen? The person will never get a chance to toil or to work. Having said all these, the sixth house lot should not be debilitated. Even if it is debilitated, it should be Subhatva. It will make the native to have some profession in their life if moon is Subhatva. When sixth house lot gets debilitated in the tenth house, moon will deliver benefits if only it is waxing heading closely towards Purnima or when it is Purnima and when it has connection with natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 11th house which is Sagittarius. Whatever benefits I mentioned for the placement of the moon in the 3rd house will apply for the 11th house as well for the native of Aquarius ascendant. Indeed, I should say that it will deliver more benefits when the moon resides in the 11th house. Because as per Bhavad Bhavam, moon will be in the 6th house to its own house cancer. It will not deliver any Pabatwa effects of the 6th house. It will deliver certain level of good effects of the 6th house. These benefits will be definitely delivered when moon resides in the 11th house. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 12th house which is Capricorn. The native of Aquarius Ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi is the fortunate one. The bad house effects of the 6th house will not definitely happen. If the good house effects of the 6th house has to happen, then moon has to be Subhatva. Like it should be waxing or it should have the connection of Jupiter or Venus, like an aspect or conjunction of these planets. When the moon resides in Capricorn, it will aspect its own house cancer, which is the 6th house to the ascendant. This aspect of the moon will strengthen the 6th house. From one point of view, this is good and from another point of view, this is not considered to be good. When moon is Pabatva and aspect its own house, moon will spoil the life of the native. It means it will increase the problems of the deaths. If moon resides as Amavasya moon, and aspects the cancer, then it will increase the debts, increase the pressure, it will put a lot of pressure on the life of the native because of the debts. When moon is highly Subhatva, what will happen? When moon is highly Subhatva, that is when it is waxing or heading closely towards Purnima and aspects its own house cancer, it will deliver all the good effects of the sixth house. This is such a good position for the moon if the moon has got light energy or when it has connection of benefits. Well, this is all about the effects of the moon in different houses for the native of Aquarius Ascendant. 
In my next video, I'm going to explain the effects of the moon in the 12 different houses for the native of Pisces ascendant. Well, this is question time. What are the possible reasons that why the native of Aquarius ascendant should not undergo the major planetary period of the moon? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Gurji's website is given below in the description box of this video. It is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.